Good day everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about the process and how to find the rational zeros of the polynomial function. So let's discuss this one. We have the given find the zeros of p of x equals 3x cubed plus 11x squared minus 24x minus 20. So before we discuss the step-by-step -step process on how to solve for the zeros of this polynomial function, I want you to know that to find the zeros of the polynomials means to get the values of x that will make your function zero. So let's proceed to the steps so you can understand it better. We have step number one, list the possible rational zeros in the form of p over q. p here is our constant term and then q here is our leading coefficient. So in the given polynomial function, we have 20 as our p and the value of q is equal to 3. So let's write the possible rational zeros. In the numerator, we will list here, all the factors of the constant term which is equal to 20. And in the denominator, we will be listing here all the factors of the leading coefficient which is 3. So let's focus on the numerator first. Let's write the factors of 20. We have positive and negative 1, positive and negative 2, positive and negative 4, positive and negative 5, positive and negative 10, and positive and negative 20. So in the denominator, let's write all the factors of 3. We only have positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 3. For us to have a simplified possible rational 0, we have to divide the numerators to the denominators. So let's divide first all the factors of the constant term to our denominator which is 1. So we have Positive and negative 1 divided by positive and negative 1, we have positive and negative 1. And then 2 divided by 1, that is simply 2. 4 divided by 1, that's equal to 4. And then 5 divided by 1 is equal to 5. 10 divided by 1, that's equal to 10. And 20 divided by 1 is equal to 20. Now let's simplify the numerator by the denominator which is 3. Let's divide 1 and 3 that's equal to 1 third and then 2 divided by 3 that's equal to 2 thirds. 4 divided by 3 that's equal to 4 thirds and 5 divided by 3 is equal to 5 thirds then 10 divided by 3 is equal to 10 thirds and then 20 divided by 3 is equal to 20 thirds. Now we have the complete simplified possible rational zeros. So we have to proceed to synthetic division and try this sum of the factors or sum of the possible rational zeros and try to find out which of these possible rational zeros are the zeros of our given polynomial function. So let's proceed to the next step. Let's write here the possible rational zeros. And then let's proceed to step number two. Use synthetic division to find the zeros of p of x. So here is our given polynomial function. And the degree here is on its third degree. That means we have to look for three zeros only for the solution of this given problem. Now because we have 12 possible rational zeros, we have no choice but to do trial and error for us to be able to get the three zeros of our function. Take note of the numerical coefficients of the given polynomial function because we will be using it as the coefficients of our dividends. So we have here positive 3, positive 11, negative 24, and then negative 20. Let's write that one as the coefficients of our dividend. So we can say if it's a zero of the function if the remainder will be zero. So let's proceed. First thing is first you have to bring down the leading coefficient which is 3 and then proceed to two operations. We have multiplication and then addition. We will be using these two operations repeatedly. So let's proceed. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. 3 plus 11 is equal to 14. 14 times 1 is equal to 14. 14 plus negative 24 is equal to negative 10. Negative 10 times 1 is equal to negative 10. 
negative 10 plus negative 20 is equal to negative 30. Our remainder is not equal to 0, that means 1 is not a 0 of the function. So let's try to pick another possible rational zeros here. So let's try positive 2 if this is a 0 of the function. Bring down 3 here, and then let's multiply 3 times 2, that's equal to 6. 6 plus 11 is equal to 17. 17 times 2 is equal to 34. 34 plus negative 24 is equal to positive 10. Positive 10 times 2 is equal to 20. 20 plus negative 20 is equal to 0. Our remainder here is 0. That means 2 is a 0. And then let's proceed to other factors. So by the way, we will be using synthetic division until we got all the zeros of the function. So let's try if 1 third is a 0 of this function. So let's bring down 3 here, and then let's multiply 3 times 1 third. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. And then 1 plus 11, that's equal to 12. Then multiply again, 12 times 1 third, that is 12 times 1 is equal to 12, divided by 3, that's equal to 4. And then 4 plus negative 24 is equal to negative 20. Then, negative 20 times 1 third is equal to negative 20 over 3. And then, negative 20 over 3 plus negative 20 is equal to negative 80 over 3. Our remainder here is not equal to 0, meaning 1 third is not a 0 of the function. So, let's try another rational zeros. So, we have negative 5 here. Let's bring down 3 and then proceed to the multiplication and addition operation. So we have 3 times negative 5 that's equal to negative 15 and then negative 15 plus 11 is equal to negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 5 is equal to positive 20. Positive 20 plus negative 24 is equal to negative 4. Then negative 4 times negative 5 is equal to positive 20 and positive 20 plus negative 20 is equal to 0. Therefore, our remainder here is 0. That means negative 5 is a 0. Let's try if negative 2 thirds is a factor or is a 0 of the given function. So let's bring down 3 here and then let's multiply 3 times negative 2 thirds. That is 3 times 2 that's equal to 6. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2, negative 2. So, negative 2 plus 11 is equal to positive 9. And then, proceed again to multiplication. We have 9 times negative 2 thirds. We have 9 times 2 is equal to 18. 18 divided by 3 is equal to 6. And then, 6 plus negative 24 is equal to negative 30. And then, negative 30 times negative 2 thirds, that is equal to positive 20. And then positive 20 plus negative 20, that's equal to 0. So we have here our remainder which is equal to 0. Therefore, negative 2 thirds is a 0. So there we got all the zeros of the function. The last step is to gather all the zeros. So let's gather all the zeros of our function. We have 3x cubed plus 11x squared minus 24x minus 20. The zeros of this function are negative 2 thirds, negative 5, and positive 2. Let's try to check if the given zeros are correct. So we can do that by writing the zeros into its factor form, like with the variables x. So we have here for negative 2 thirds, we have 3x plus 2. And then for negative 5, we write that as x plus 5. And for positive 2, we have x minus 2. So we have to multiply all these three factors and if we were able to get the same function with the right side of our equation, that means all the zeros here that we were able to solve are the correct zeros of the function. So let's do that one. Let's multiply first the first two factors. We have 3x plus 2 times x plus 5. So let's multiply 3x times x that's equal to 3x squared. 3x times positive 5 is equal to 15x. 
And then we multiply 2 to x plus 5, we have 2 times x, that's equal to 2x. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Now we have 3x squared plus 15x plus 2x plus 10. Let's copy x minus 2 here and then let's combine like terms. So we have 15x plus 2x, that is simply 17x. So let's rewrite that one. We have 3x squared plus 17x plus 10 and then copy x minus 2. And then we multiply this one, 3x squared plus 17x plus 10 by x minus 2. We have 3x squared times x is equal to 3x cubed. 17x times x is equal to 17x squared. 10 times x is equal to 10x. And then let's multiply this expression to negative 2. We have 3x squared times negative 2 that's equal to negative 6x squared. 17x times negative 2 is equal to negative 34x and positive 10 times negative 2 is equal to negative 20. We have to combine like terms to simplify this expression. So let's just copy 3x cubed and then combine 17x squared plus negative 6x squared that's equal to 11x squared. Also combine positive 10x and negative 34x that's equal to negative 24x and then just copy minus 20. And then you can see that's actually equal to the right side of our equation. That means the zeros are correct. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to update you on my next videos.